Some children in southern Oregon spend part of their summer on the wild side. Wildlife Safari in Winston hosts a number of camps for various age groups. Camps where kids learn about wild animals while spending some time with them. That's only one part of Wildlife Safari's educational outreach, being an important resource for area schools. I was privileged to tag along for a few hours while this summer camp was in its final day. The triple digit weather had them returning to this classroom after a full morning of animal encounters. The classroom was well equipped for hands-on activities and some items that kids were otherwise unlikely to encounter. The campers got to work with some living animals on this day, tortoises. A chance for a closer look at both of our tortoises here. I heard some of you guys, no, I heard some of you guys say turtle, but these are actually both tortoises based on what we've talked about already. Very good. So tortoises are designed to be very, very good at digging. Whereas turtles are designed to be very good at swimming. So what kind of physical adaptations would a tortoise have that a turtle wouldn't to be good at digging? Christine. Sharp claws. Sharp little claws, absolutely. So both of our tortoises here, they have little claws on the ends of their feet, whereas a turtle is gonna have webbed footing. They almost look like duck feet, kind of. Obviously they're reptiles, not birds but they have webbing like a duck would, and that's gonna help them swim. So these guys have little nails or claws to help them dig. So both of our tortoises are actually full grown. So even, not quite yet. So even though Brandy over there looks pretty small, it's just the kind of species that she is. So she is a Russian tortoise, which means she's not native here to the United States. She's over in Russia, very far ways away. And here we have a California desert tortoise. So she's a bigger species. And actually, Callie over here is smaller than most desert tortoises because she was someone's pet and very similar to our ferrets that I showed you earlier. They did not take very good care of her. So she did not have a proper diet. So she didn't get as big and strong as most desert tortoises would. And you'll even notice that her shell is kind of concave. See how it kind of goes in? it should usually be much more rounded. So she actually had some diet deficiencies when she was young, so she didn't get as big as she's supposed to, which is pretty sad. It's another reason you want to make sure you do your research before you have a pet of any kind. Can you still grow? So where do these guys live if they are tortoises? Do they live in the water? No. No, no. where do they live? On land. land. On land? In warm or cold climates? Warm. Warm, absolutely. So obviously, desert tortoise. She's going to live in a desert, dry, arid climate. You can find these guys down in like southwest United States. So Nevada, California, Texas, New Mexico. But they are actually pretty endangered, this particular species that I have holding in my hands right now. Any guesses as to why they might be endangered? What kinds of things would be bad for a tortoise in the wild? Aiden. Um, <coughs> predators? Predators? Maybe predators? Yeah, that's a good guess. This is more of an outside influence, though. Not so much predators or other animals. Mm -hmm. Isabella? Um, their habitat has like, yeah, very good. So these guys are suffering because of habitat destruction and fragmentation. Two big fancy words. Basically what that means is people are destroying their natural habitats by building homes and creating cities and roads, and then they're also separating their natural habitats so that they aren't able to, to move around as much as they once were able to, which is called fragmentation. And that's usually done with like roads and streets and stuff. It makes it so these guys can't move around as much as they should be able to. What's another thing you guys think might be bad for a tortoise in the wild? Nicholas. Um, like if they like if they don't have like have their shell like that, mm -hmm. um, and the people don't like s step on the ground where they dug a hole, it yeah. might collapse on them. Okay, yeah. So he makes a really valid point. 
that humans directly could have a really bad influence on a tortoise if they were to get too close to them. Very, very good. And that actually ties along with something that these guys um, have as a threat, and it's people. So these guys oftentimes, Hunter earlier today, where's Hunter? <laughs> He wanted to go after a wild lizard. He tried to find a lizard. He saw where he was living and he wanted to go and find him. I told him that's probably not a good idea. Why would that not be a good idea? Someone new. Why would it not be good to disturb a wild animal? Chef. Okay, so it could be bad for you if you were to disturb them. Why would it be bad for that animal? Katie. Because they wouldn't be able to move around Okay, they might not be able to move. Yeah, very good. What else might happen? What would happen if you snuck up on, say, like a skunk or an opossum? <laughs> it would be bad for you, but what would they do? They would get scared, right? Yes. They would get really scared and they might react in a negative way. And that's exactly what this type of tortoise will do. So desert tortoises have a very weird defense mechanism. When they get picked up or threatened by a human, they will actually pee basically. So I'll, I'll explain it. So these guys, think about if you're living in the desert, water is few and far between, right? There's not a ton of water. So these guys will spend months and months moving around, looking for water. As they find water, they'll drink it up and they can actually store it. They can build up these storage of water that can last them for a really long period of time and they'll kind of use it gradually. It's not like us where we need to drink all the time. It's not the same at all. So these guys will store up water and they'll use it as time passes. So why would it be bad if you were to go disturb one of them, pick them up, or scare them? Why would it be bad? Levi. Because when they pee out the water, the water gets out of their things and they don't have enough water and then they can survive without the water. Absolutely. Very good. So these guys have spent all this time searching for water. And if we disturb them and they get so afraid that they actually get rid of all their water, it can be very dangerous for them because they might not be able to find new water quickly enough and they can dehydrate and die. Very, very good. It depends on their environment to keep them warm enough to survive, which is why they don't live in really cold areas. Very good. What else do you guys know? What do you think these two like to eat? What do you guys think these tortoises like to eat? Grass. Grass, yeah, they are herbivores, which means they only eat plant material. Turtles and tortoises, some turtles, when they're young especially, will actually eat meat also. They'll eat like little worms and insects and stuff like that. Some even eat little tiny fish species. So tortoises are only herbivores, they only eat plants. Do they have teeth? No. No, they don't have teeth. They have what's called a beak. So it's not like a bird beak, essentially, but it's kind of a sharp little uh, little edge on their face there. And they can use that when they get a big piece of vegetation. No, thank you. They can tear it apart really, really well with that little beak. And then she'll just rip off little chunks that are perfect size for her mouth. And she kind of chews them, gets them in the back of her mouth, and then she just swallows them. So as far as armor, you guys, we help. But that's actually how what happens to them as they grow. When the tortoise or a turtle is alive, they'll shed these little segments and then they'll grow in new ones that are bigger. So those shells absolutely grow with them. Very good. Do you have a question, Simone? Let's check if your toenails lived here. It could just be a biofact that we were pets at one point, and they were donated to us because those people taking care of them no longer wanted to look after them, which unfortunately is the sad truth for a lot of our animals. Is this the same as the jumping turtle? Absolutely. It's really smooth. And this one has a gloss on it. They definitely, they put like a bark. I will let you touch the tortoises. Yes, remember they're, they're tortoises, Hunter.